choose what is best. Habit will soon render it agreeable and easy. Pythagoras, an immortal mathematical genius, a vegetarian, a raw food advocate, a founder of a whole philosophy. He knew that if we just made a good choice, it would be easy on us. Of course, the problem that most of us face today is we really don't know what is best, especially in the area of food. There's more confusion in this area for, than any other subject, and, that's for, and there's a reason for that. It's by design. All of our so-called experts in health are being misdirected by a very small group of people who own and control everything. They control the educational systems. According to Yusuf Mullins, these people who rule everything are Satanists. Now you don't have to believe in God or Satan to understand how this works. They believe it. And according to Yusuf Mullins in his book, the Curse, of, the Curse of Canaan, he said that these guys have usurped the priesthood and the educational system 3,000 years ago. So choose what is best, but how do we know what is best? That's the problem that most of us face. If you're brand new to this and you don't know what to do, heed the, world, the words of Aristotle. Believe only your own experience. There is no fact like a fact that's learned from your own life. That's where you want to test an idea as time has come. You want to do what they made Pythagoras do when he went up to Egypt to learn the secret sciences. They told him, before you can come in to our higher institutes of learning, you have to do a 40-day fast outside of the city supervised before we let you in. And he, of course, thought, well, this is just a test of my willpower and my energy. And, they, and he was told, no, you won't be able to grasp what we're going to tell you until you do this fast. In other words, until you have a brand new reference, there's no way you can challenge anybody when it comes to this information. I've always said in my videos that my approach is to use logic. That's why I created a special teaching tool, and it's why I perfected a three-step process. There are two criteria, or two requirements that are needed when we use logic. The first one has to do with what's called the structure of an argument. The second has to do with what's known as the contents or the details or the specifics. So there are two tests. You always give people the easy test first. It's the easiest one to grade. That's the structure test. Now remember, if you haven't seen my other videos, when you think of logic, the structure would be like railroad tracks. And they're one directional. They only go one way. Then the train on top of the track would be the contents, the details, the specifics. It's really difficult to find the logical fallacies in the specifics to something as complicated as medicine and even nutrition. But it's real easy to find whether or not the structure is right. And that's the, why I create a very special teaching tool. It uses knowledge in a way that's never been seen before. It uses what I call three stages of knowledge, which is based on two sequential ordered pairs. This way we can see if we're taking the first step in the wrong direction. And as I've proven in my other videos, the people who are in charge are guilty of putting the cart before the horse for a problem that's 100% within their control. In Latin, that's known as monus ponens. That's the logical fallacy that we find all of our so-called systems are guilty of. That's why systems aren't the solution. We're the solution. Again, Pythagoras, as smart as this man was, they had to make him do a fast in order for them to grasp what we're talking about. And that's where the other part of the logic comes into play. I created a special tool to prove the logic. You can see the logic in my arguments or in my statements and my explanations. But when it comes to proving the specifics to somebody, there's only one thing you can do. And, and that, is to take, is that, that is to get them to take the first step of my three-step process. Remember, I perfected a three-step process. There's only one thing we really have to do to solve every problem that's 100% within control. Satisfy two groups of needs. But most of us are not willing and able to do so, which is why I added those two preliminary steps. The first step addresses the willingness issue on a temporary basis. That's why we take a solid food vacation. People keep saying, well, why should we do this? Well, this is for the masses to wake them up. If you're already eating an ideal diet and, and you're living in an ideal world, then you don't have to do anything, but you don't even live in an ideal world anymore. So periodic solid food vacations are a way of life. But to wake up from the hell we're in right now, 
for the average person to make sense out of all of this, to win every argument, there's only one way we can prove the specifics to anybody. There's not a thing I can say to convince somebody who doesn't want to hear this. That's the problem. Most people don't want to hear this. Nor are they willing to test an idea as time has come. But if they take the first step, that's how you convince them that this is the truth. Just like they had to do this with Pythagoras. You got to see what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. You're under a spell. Again, most people, when they hear about raw food, they immediately don't want to believe it. So they're going to go look in every place they can to find someone that slams it and says it's bad. And guess what? You won't find a shortage of that. Because the whole world revolves around us cooking our food. If you can't wrap your brain around that, that just shows you how much of, of denial you're in. Because cooking obviously destroys everything. Everything. It alters the food. Oh, we've adapted to it. Yeah, we can adapt to a lot of crap. Doesn't make us impervious to the crap. So just because we've adapted to the mistakes we've made slightly, which explains why some people do better on a paleo diet and some on a vegan, because their ancestors had more of one type of food versus the other. So yeah, we do adapt to the crap we put in us, but that doesn't mean, again, we're impervious to it. We have to realize that these are fundamental mistakes. And even if we were able to adapt to a point where we didn't create a serpent inside of us, we're still destroying the biophotons, which is the coherent sunlight energy that feeds our sixth sense. And what are you going to find with, with people who are who don't want to hear the truth, they're going to run to Wikipedia and go, oh, it's pseudoscience. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Greger did that. He was, I think, put on the spot on a live question and answer. I think he probably just went to Wikipedia real quick and said, oh, it's, it's, it's pseudoscience. My friends, don't go to Wikipedia to learn anything meaningful about how to get out of the hole we're in because Wikipedia is owned by the people who want us to be in a hole. And remember, we can't rely on all these studies either. I mean, God, have you not seen the documentary Vaxxed? If that doesn't make you have no faith in studies, I don't know what will. And the, what really irritates you about this documentary, the whistleblower came out and said, look, they told us to destroy the evidence. But I didn't. We, we removed 40% of the sample size, which showed a 340% increase in autism. And every time someone would say, well, isn't there a connection? The so-called experts in charge, the authorities would go, look, we already did the definitive study. Shut the hell up. We don't need to talk about this anymore. We proved it to you. No, you didn't. You can't trust any studies. Who can you trust? Only yourself. When you finally believe in your own experience, you're in for a treat. <laughs>